Good morning. Our entrance antiphon, the Lord became my protector. He brought me out to a place of freedom. He saved me because he delighted in me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule and that your church may rejoice, untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Now will I recall God's works. What I have seen, I will describe. At God's word were his works brought into being. They do his will, he has ordained for them. As the rising sun is clear to all, so the glory of the Lord fills all his works. Yet even God's holy ones must fail in recounting the wonders of the Lord. Though God has given these his hosts and strength to stand firm before his glory, he plumbs the depths and penetrates the heart. Their innermost being he understands. The, the Most High possesses all knowledge and sees from of old the things that are to come. He makes known the past and the future and reveals the deepest secrets. No understanding does he lack. No single thing escapes him. Perennial is his almighty wisdom. He is from all eternity, one and the same with nothing added, nothing taken away. No need of a counselor for him. How beautiful are all his works, even to the spark and fleeting vision. The universe lives and abides forever to meet each need. Each creature is preserved. All of them differ one from another. Yet none, none of them has he made in vain. For each in turn, as it comes, is good. Can one ever see enough of their splendor? The word of the Lord. <clears throat> the response oriel. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-string lyre, chant his praises. Sing to him a new song. Pluck the strings skillfully with shouts of gladness. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. For upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the breath of his mouth, all their host. He gathers the waters of the sea as in a flask. 
In cellars he confines the deep. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all who dwell in the world revere him. For he spoke and it was made. He commanded and it stood forth. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way, your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Bartimaeus, the blind man, will speak something well to each and every one of us in a spiritual sense. Bartimaeus knows that something is wrong. He knows he is blind. And as he hears that Jesus is approaching, he cries out. He asks for help. In fact, Jesus says to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man responds, I want to see. The blind man recognizes, if you will, his weakness. He recognizes that something is amiss. And he simply asks the one necessary person, the one who can help, to help him. He asks Jesus to, well, restore his sight. He doesn't even know what he's asking in many respects because he's never seen. But he wants to see. And in many respects, what this re represents to, well, us, is that he, Jesus, removes his spiritual blindness. He enables Bartimaeus to become whole, to become healed. Because Jesus simply asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Well, we approach Jesus in the very same way, to remove certain areas of blindness in our own lives so that we may draw closer, truly, to the Lord. 
But are we like the crowd who rebuked the blind man who's calling out to Jesus? Do we want things just to stay the same? As seemingly the crowd would have. We need to call out to Jesus. We need to listen to the Lord who says to us, what do you want me to do for you? And if we but ask and have the courage to ask, the Lord will show us the way and heal our blindness. Let us bring the needs of our church and our world before our merciful Father. For the church, may our Blessed Mother intercede for her and help her in mission to make disciples of all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For peace in our world, May the grace of God bring about forgiveness and reconciliation within our homes, communities, and our nations. Let us pray to the Lord. For families in this faith community, may God strengthen and uphold them to be models of love and harmony for each other. Let us pray to the Lord. For the recently deceased members of our families, may they enjoy the fruits of their service to the church and the heavenly presence of Mary. And for the intention of this Mass, Mary Jane Zacone, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers we hold silently in our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We join in our vocation prayer. God, our oh, Father, Father, we beg, beg you for an increased increase religious, religious vocation. Help our people offer their lives in service to you. Let them hear your spirit's invitation and awaken in their hearts a desire to respond with courage, generosity, and joy. Raise up from our families faithful leaders who will serve as deacons, priests, and consecrated religious, as we entrust to your care all who seek to do your will. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the communion antiphon, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, says the Lord. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.